I was in traveling in Ecuador and before I left I got a really bad feeling that something was going to happen and it was concerning my dad. I remember returning home and my sister picks me up from the airport. She's like, well, I've got some news for you. While you were gone, um, Dad got admitted into the emergency room because he was having multiple heart attacks. And now they want to give him a quadruple bypass tomorrow. And on top of that, Mom's been diagnosed with cervical cancer. Welcome home. So I remember visiting him in the hospital and he was scheduled for a bypass, a quadruple bypass the next day. And I remember going to see him and the surgery really didn't go that well. The cardiologist actually told my mom that he maybe had six months to live, maybe six months to a year at best. The scariest part to me was coming into his hospital room and I saw this cart being wheeled into the room, and it was his lunch. I was like, oh, look, they, they brought you some food, and he really couldn't even talk much. So I went to go and lift the, uh, they had a, like a metal tray on top of the, the plate, and I went to go lift the tray that, off the plate, and I was shocked and I was horrified, because what I saw on that plate was Swedish meatballs with gravy. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute, <laughs> this can't be, right. He just had a quadruple bypass. He's, you know, got heart disease. Then I lift the other tray. And under there I saw a German chocolate cake. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. This cannot be right. He's a diabetic. And I went and asked the uh, person who brought the food and I said, are you sure this is right? You got the wrong room here or something because there's no way this food is for my dad. I mean, he just had a quadruple bypass operation and he's diabetic. Oh yeah, Damon Knight, yeah, yeah, we've got the listing. And I was like, are you kidding me? This is what got him in here. And they said, oh, what's the problem? What's the problem? You know, they normally eat the same kind of foods after they get out of the surgery. And I said, well, first of all, he's a diabetic, so he shouldn't be having German chocolate cake with all that sugar. Um, second of all, he just had a quadruple bypass. Isn't that to like unblock arteries? Well, yeah. He can't have Swedish meatballs with gravy on it. That blocks arteries. Oh, well, if, you, if, if there's a problem with that, you know, we'll go and get the dietician. We'll, we'll let you talk to them. So they brought the dietician and I got to talk to him. I said, I said, what's going on here? You know, my dad just had the surgery and here you're giving him this stuff to eat. Oh, well, you know, most patients, they go back to their normal diets and stuff. I said, this is worse than his diet was. <laughs> That's the scary part. Here he is in the hospital trying to get well and what are they trying to feed him is something that would not only put him in the hospital, but is actually worse than what he was eating prior to going into the hospital. And that's scary. I said, he can't eat all this because it's got too much fat in it. Oh, okay, well, we can put him down for the low-fat plan. I said, oh, really? What's the low-fat plan? I said, oh, well, we'll give him um, chicken breasts, and um, we can put this, leave the skin on there. And um, we also have, like, mashed potatoes. and. We can just, you know, we can use butter buds or lower fat butter. And I said, oh, that's, that's interesting. Do you have any vegetables? Well, yeah, you can order it with like a salad. I said, oh, okay, what, can you just bring in the salad? Well, that's, you know, that's not a full meal plan. We gotta make sure it's balanced. I said, well, he's a vegetarian. And I just threw that out there to see what they'd say. I said, oh, well, that wasn't on his sheet. If he's a vegetarian, okay, well, we can get him, um, we have this egg salad thing that we can give him, and we also have um, some cheese, toast. I mean, I was just like, whoa, where did, when did this become health food? <laughs> here we are in the hospital, you think, hey, you're supposed to be getting healthy here, and this was the food that they were feeding him. And so I finally said, you know what, he's a vegan. And they looked at me and they said, what's a vegan? <laughs> so they basically didn't know what to feed him. And they told me, well, if you want to feed him, you know, you can bring him whatever you want. 
um, but we don't have a specific plan for vegans. And a vegan, for those of you who don't know, is someone who doesn't eat any animal products, um, and they eat typically a vegetable or plant-based diet. I guess I shouldn't have been in so surprised as I was because on the first floor of this cardiac hospital, as you walk in, is a McDonald's. So they get you going in when you come in so you can get ready for your operation. Then by the time you go upstairs, you have your operation, come back down, fill up your arteries, and then go and get another one. I think that's the philosophy behind it. I'm not sure. But it, it was just frightening to me that this is what was happening in the hospital, no less after an operation for somebody who just had a quadruple bypass. started doing a lot of research. I had already been taking some nutrition classes and uh, in biochemistry. I started studying and, and reading and learning and learning more stuff. And every day I started bringing him green juices and vegetable broth and little by little he started getting better. But it took, it took some time. He was in a really weakened state. You know, there were several times he told me that he thought he was going to die in there. And he was in there for about a month and then he had a second month and that was in and out of ICU. A second month, he was in a, uh, another facility where um, he was in kind of like special treatment. When he got out of the hospital, he came and stayed with me. I was the only one that kind of had the flexibility or time off to be able to, to help. Um, when he came to my house, he literally could not walk up the stairs. He couldn't even walk from the back of my porch to where the grass landing was, which was maybe like 35, 40 feet. He could barely walk. He would get so winded and tired and lightheaded and ill. And they, gave, they said he had maybe 20% of his heart, if that. And again, the cardiologist only gave him like six months to live. So it was a pretty desperate situation. Basically became like Nurse Dina and had all the stuff I had a blood pressure monitor and I had his glucose and I had all his pills lined up and he had a box, a bag about this large, just full of pills because they had him on so much stuff. So during my research and through reading and learning and, and doing more study, I came across the benefits that vegan diets could have, uh, especially for diabetes. And so every day we do these measurements and I had him on a very strict vegan diet and every day I'd have him go and I had a, a Tony Little kind of like elliptical trainer and he went and worked out on that for you know as much as he could. It started out it was like five minutes I think and he'd have to stop in the middle but every day he would keep doing that and I had him doing the the uh, the diet. When he was there um, he got Im immediately, he just started getting better. He looked like 10 years younger by the end of the month. He was there maybe a month, month and a half. He lost about 22 pounds um, and he was able to walk two miles a day and even climb Enchanted Rock, which is this huge mountain that's over here. And it was just, it was like lifestyle changes, which was never suggested to him. First thing was, hey, you got to go get surgery. Hey, you need to be on this pill. You need to do this and that. It was never suggested that your lifestyle, the things that you eat, what you put in your body, and it makes so much sense. It's like you do this three, four times a day. You think it's not going to have an impact on you. It's going to have a huge impact on you and your health and how you feel. And I mean, it was just unbelievable. When he went back to the doctor, they didn't know what had happened to him. <laughs> in fact, they were like, well, OK. You had some major changes here, didn't you? And the, the changes that he had were really important because they really showed me that diet and lifestyle can really change somebody's life for the better.